Hi everyone, how you doing today? So, the last video we did, we left off at number 23 with the amazing Spider-Man. How it's much better done than the uh, than the original Spider-Man's movies. And we were doing this tribute originally to say, um, to remind us about all the great things that Stan Lee did for us as far as cinema goes. It was really cool seeing all the movies. So, I would be really missed to not see him. I, I'm curious to see where he'll be in the last movie, because I know he's in it. But... Yeah, so we decided to do a little countdown of all the movies, the top 50 in the last uh, 30 years that he's done. So this is really cool. So last one was, again, was Spider-Man number 23, which brings us to number 22, which is X-Men First Class. Now it's like, why is X-Men First Class above the X-Men? Well, because again, they we're talking about the same kind of format, lots of characters, dynamic. Uh, they went back to a, kind of an origin story. It just, I don't know, it just felt better in a lot of ways. Um, because the graphics were better, obviously. Uh, the characters, there was a lot of, there were some original characters. Uh, I don't know who this whole angel was. They did do an angel, but it wasn't the right angel, right? They did a different one to kind of like coordinate, correlate it, but it wasn't really the best one. And the part about that one is they killed off all the, all the characters going into the, into the sequel, which I thought was weird. But all in all, the movie was pretty decent. I liked the actor they did for uh, Professor X. I liked the transition between the characters. Uh, the storyline was pretty decent. And again, if you look at it from an alternate universe, it was actually very feasible. And at this point, since the X-Men series has kind of been all over the place on, con all over the place on continuity, I just felt like just, the movie felt better in a lot of ways than the X-Men movies. I don't know about my friends who always argue with me about how bad the first movies were. If they thought this one was better, because a lot of them kind of wrote off X-Men after the first movies. But I thought this one was pretty decent. I liked the way they went with it. And also, I liked the way they left it for a sequel. And possibly, and rumored that there would be a connection between the two timelines. So, we were really excited to see that when it came out. But all in all, I mean, it was a pretty decent film. It only makes it in the top, you know, 22. It's not quite top 20. But, again, for an X-Men movie, that's pretty, pretty stinking good considering... The continuity issues with each movie. Then we get to number 21, which is Hulk 2. Now, I don't know about anybody else. This is probably ranked pretty high for some people. I loved the Hulk movie, the second one. I liked it better than the first one. The first one had, again, the actresses based on um, the TV show, which everyone loved back in the 70s and 80s. And But it was also like slow moving and stuff, and the graphics weren't the greatest. By this point, the graphics got way better. The villain was way better done. It was also much more realistic with dealing with abomination. Um, hoax accuracy to the comic was more accurate to the comic. It was better that way too. I liked Edward Norton as the Hulk. I thought the movie ran really well. I thought it moved quickly. A lot of action in it. I do like Lev Tyler as Betty. It was pretty good. I mean, I'm still a big, huge Jennifer Connelly fan, but they couldn't pick anybody better to replace her. Lev Tyler was pretty cool as Betty. And I like the fact that they're like connecting these movies through the one character, the general, which is really cool. Uh, at the end of this movie, of course, we see the first of the connector clips between the different movies. This was the actually the second of this universe after Iron Man that came out a few months before it. And again, a lot of people, you know, said that, that of course that was that this wasn't any better than the original movie. And I think that's the reason why it tanked. Didn't do so well, and it didn't make a sequel. Even though I was really looking forward to it, because they alluded to his next big villain, which we never, which got to see little clips of at the end, but it never really panned out, which is ultimately pretty sad. Um, I always joke that like Hulk started this universe with the first movie, and the only reason why I say that is because they actually linked both movies together. Because where we find Hulk in the beginning of this second edition of the Hulk, and the Incredible Hulk, was where they left him off in the first Hulk. The movie we disavow, which is hilarious. So it's your opinion. Hulk came first. Iron Man came first. It's really kind of clutching straws here, I think. But Iron Man was the first one where we get to see um, uh, Nick Fury and the rumor of the Avenger Initiative, which was really cool at the end of the Iron Man movie. So yeah, this one was ranked. Sorry, guys. This one was ranked number 21 because it was actually a pretty decent movie and I wish they would have continued it. And maybe hopefully in the future they will, but it's been my um, experience that when they make two different mistakes like that, they don't usually go back and revamp it again. Sorry about that. 
which brings us to the top 20. So this is all the best movies of the Marvel that I feel like. These are the top 20. So these are really important movies that led to where we're at now with the final movie coming out in May, which I'm really excited for. And the number 20 movie is Iron Man 2. Again, for all those who are big Iron Man fans, you're probably like, well, that's pretty low for Iron Man 2. Again, I'm more of a Captain America fan. Sorry, everyone out there. You can put your comments in there what you feel about that. But the reality is um, Captain America just has more, it's more dynamic in his personality and the way he is with people. And he's like more like patriotic and Captain America is kind of like an arrogant, egotistical um, jerk that keeps making the same mistakes over and over again, even though he's trying to fix the mistakes he made in the past, which is funny. But in Iron Man 2, you know, we get this uh, new character, the guy with the, that's coming after him because of his family getting, um, again, repetitive storyline where he gets, his family gets destroyed by weapons uh, from his, from his enemy here, Iron Man. And he tries to take him out and show him up at the racetrack with those little electrical arm things he was wing flying around. Then, again, very good movie, awesome sequel. Uh, Henry Downward uh, Jr. is awesome. Um, he's awesome in this movie. I think it was really good. Uh, but at the same time, it just kind of, it wasn't as good as the Captain America movies, personally. I think they did um, a good job in the graphics. Again, they're getting better as they went along. And I think that the new suit looked amazing. I love how they like change up the different suits, different generations, from the very first suit to the most cur more current suit, kind of keep it fresh. Uh, but again, the dynamic between him and his girlfriend, I mean, is she manipulating him? Is he the ego magnetic we know from the comic? I mean, we like it in the cinema because again, romance sells, but was she that big a part in the comic book? Again, the earlier days of the I'm a comic that didn't collect. I only collected the ones in the 90s, so you let me know what your thoughts are on that. Which brings us to number 19. X-Men Days of Future Past. So, um, X-Men Days of Future Past, I think, is the highest one we ranked here. Number 19, that's pretty high up there. But it's because I felt like this movie was just amazing from beginning to end. I mean, it was better than the original movies only because it did have... I mean, it kind of... It was just its own thing and kind of went off on a completely different beaten path. It played with the whole timelines. It played with uh, time travel, and which we love, which we've seen in X-Men. Over and over again, we didn't see it so much in the earlier movies. We did see the uh, origin pre generation movie for the original movies, a prequel, which was really awesome. But in this one, you know, we're talking about the two generations intermixing, which was really awesome, I felt like. And even though, again, this is like a Wolverine movie, Wolverine goes back and saves the day, goes back into a younger part of himself with the consciousness of what happens in the future. Because let's talk about if we knew then what we know now, what would we do differently? So that's basically what we're doing here. He goes back into his younger self, his consciousness, to stop a war that they are now trying to survive in the future. It was cool, the battle scenes in, in the beginning where they're all trying to um, keep uh, protect themselves from the Sentinels. Sentinels were amazing. Um, it was really sad to see some of my favorites get killed, <laughs> like Storm, so uselessly in this. Um, so the battle scenes were cool and the, I, the way they set up the timeline where they barely make it. Um, so yeah, I mean, I like the intermixing of the, two, the different generations and the different cat. No, this dynamic cast is huge. You get to see young versions of different ones and older versions. Really good movie, literally well done, I thought. Uh, and at the end, when we see all of our old characters come back from the preset, from the previous movies, we're like, this is awesome. This actually fixed the timeline. We can move on to new movies now. So it actually made it made up for all the inaccuracies of the previous movies. Now we can start over with a whole new timeline, which is really cool. So it brings us to number 18. Now number 18 is Ant-Man. Ant-Man was amazing. And like all these other ones above the top, you know, the, in the top 20, these are all amazing movies. So it's really kind of hard to pick where they should be placed in order. So it was, trust me, it was not really hard. You might have a different opinion, but these were really hard for me to do. And man, we put it number 18 because, uh, again, very good story, pretty stinking accurate. I mean, again, we did we, we kind of skipped uh, this first generation of Ant-Man because um, we all know that Henry P.M. was the original Ant-Man, and he was Ant-Man for quite some time. He was actually the founder of the Avengers, if you don't know that. So when we think about the Avengers from the first movies, uh, he was the one that actually founded them. 
Uh, Captain America may have been the first Avenger, but only because he's the oldest. But it was actually Ant-Man, Henry, as Henry P.M., who founded the Avengers. But as we also know, later on in the comic, Ant-Man kind of goes a little bit crazy, does some maniacal things, and drives his wife crazy because he's kind of a lander, and she turns into a, a psychopathic murderer, and he's kind of this misogynistic jerk. And really, I'm glad they didn't go into all that storyline. They didn't need all that. It would make our character Ant-Man look really poor. And so they just kind of made him this kind of jerk in the movie, which was cool, kind of a relation to the old character. But they start with the second generation Ant-Man, which they've already had done in the movie, in the comic book. So I thought that was really cool, having the second generation Man, Ant-Man take over and be the current Ant-Man. So this way, it kind of was more harmonic, harmonious with the rest of the characters in the new se series of Avenger movies and whatnot. And also better for the cinema viewers, the people who go to movies, because again, the other part that wouldn't be necessary, they wouldn't know what to do with. And he was misogynistic in this time period. That being said, uh, definitely a really well done movie. I like the technology in it. I like the way Ant-Man looked. His suit was amazing. They're getting really good in this. I liked um, the the placement of Wasp throughout of it, and we didn't see her yet, but like we knew who it was. I like um, the, all the actors they got in this movie, the technology they did, and and so I thought this was a really good movie. I liked how they kind of interluded to him joining the Avengers, as we all knew before. This was a really well done movie. Definitely top 20, definitely amazing. And which brings us to number 18, or number 17, which is Logan. Now, Logan, again, we're going back to the X Men um, off the beaten path of the Avengers. He is Avenger in Reserve, by the way. But Logan is an amazing movie in the sense that it kind of goes back to the cartoon of the 90s where we're talking about how uh, the, I guess you could say the apocalypse of the Avengers, the, the not the Avengers, the, the X-Men, where they're dying off due to the persecution and the Sentinels coming after them and stuff. And so here we are, we have this version where like all the X-Men, half of them are gone. There's only a few left. He's trying to save what's left of the remnant of mutants. And so, again, we get to see Hugh Jackman be this, this dynamic character of Wolverine. We, who else could we folk see as Wolverine, right? So this movie was really good. Um, it's just a it's just a future foretelling. It's not really something that we have to, like, go, this is no there's continuity issues here. Because they've only, like, dabbled on this. They've kind of gone back and forth, done different lines of it in the comic book with the movie and everything else. This is a 2099 series. They talked about similar issues, similar things with the comic book characters in Marvel. So, I mean, they can have a lot more liberties with this. And having half the X-Men dead, I mean, that's what we all saw in the cartoon back in the 90s at this time period. So, but the action of it was really good. I like the way they set it up. Um, and then the possibility for new generations of X-Men or mutants to, to evolve and expand the universe later on down the road. It's just sad to see our hero go after all this time because, you know, we've been watching the X-Men movies and Wolverine for the past 15 years. And here... Here we are. It's like an end of an era. But for Hugh, Hackman, Hugh Jackman's case, <laughs> sorry, I think it's good end piece for him because he's been doing this for so long. And he's like probably about ready to retire. And it's, how many more storylines can we have with him And as far as X-Men going on into the future? Uh, especially with uh, things they've done with the Apocalypse series. And, and then the... So we'll, we'll see what kind of things they do. They're like a, a different, a different set of X-Men. Or a new Wolverine. I just, it'd be weird to see someone else play Wolverine. Um, which brings us to 16. 16 is a Black Panther. This one did really well in the theaters. People really loved it. The critics loved it to death. It was a really well done movie for the most part. Um, I do feel like with some of my uh, friends I've talked to about it, it is, it does run a little slower in parts, a little bit drier because it is. It's just another origin movie. It's just one that's so far past the beginnings of this whole universe with the new Avenger movies that we kind of forget that it's an origin movie and we're like, you know, it's just adaptation. It's an added, added, an addition to what was already uh, there, which was amazing. But at the same time, again, like most of our obscure characters, how many people know that much about Black Panther? He was, he was not really big until after the year 2000 where he started getting some of his own runs. Um, but beyond that, he's been an Avenger in reserve for uh, decades and before or about the time he got his own run he also married one of my heroes which is Storm Storm's his wife of course they're never going to showcase this in the movie because it's it had too much you know 
issues with production and different studios. And also, it would just be too much money to put together. Not that this whole Avenger series has been grand enough. So I thought it was pretty good. The costume was amazing. I love his, his technology. I love his abilities. But for most people, other than being super strength, he's kind of like some of the other B characters, I think. Um, luckily for him in the suit and the power of the, of the uh, panther, he's kind of superhuman like Captain America, which gives him a little bit of an oomph of just beyond his training as a warrior. So that's kind of cool. But we'll see what they do with the sequel. I'm hoping for great things for this. I think the sequel is going to be even better than the original. We'll just wait to see what happens. And he's, and as far as an ad addition to the Avengers, he's amazing. Great character to have. And it's going to be fun to see how what he his part, his role, um, how it affects the final battle when we move, bring come back to uh, to Thanos. So next week, so I'm excited for that. And then in number fifteen, we got Captain America: The First Avenger. So yeah, this one ranks above most of the other ones. I previously mentioned you probably don't think it was good because for me, Captain America, again, he's like my hero. I love what he stands for, the personification of him, um, some of the beginnings, but also because this movie is, again, as an origin movie, and it was at times for some people, I'm sure, kind of drawn out, it was still very accurate. It was still really well done. And even in the times where there, you seem like there was like more dialogue or, or more story background stuff to try and add to it. They do little things for you, little tidbits. Like when he first gets his strength and he's running down the street chasing the cars. Um, that's just really cool to see. These little things we get to see. Little little <clears throat> things that are revealed to us throughout the movie. That we're like, oh, that's so cool. That's like totally him. So I, I loved the way he's portrayed. I love the person who plays him. Um, I like the look that they put on Captain America. And I like the fact that this movie spawned off a bunch of other movie sh TV shows later on. Um, what with uh, Agent Carter and aspects of shield where you know we have these tv shows that are interconnected with the movies it's so cool because agent carter was an amazing character in the movie and her show was pretty decent even though unfortunately it only lasts like two seasons great you know these people didn't get picked up as well as people thought it would but i thought she was pretty cool in this and the movie was really good for me from a storyline aspect because it was pretty accurate and i love the character and the way they played against each other and then in 14 we get guardians 2 Guardians 2 was a really well done movie. I love Groot. And Groot's like the character everyone loves. I mean, and no matter what you do with him, Groot just makes the whole movie. Rocket is one of my favorite characters in the whole uh, universe right now with the Avenger movies. I just love his attitude. I love his, the way they make him his persona. But the dynamic of the Guardians is like they have their own thing, much not, unlike, not too unlike the Avengers themselves. The banter back and forth, the comedy, the, the soundtrack's amazing. The graphics are awesome. Uh, I love um, um, the, is it Landu or Windu? <laughs> it shuts down. I just love the whole tribute to him at the end of the movie where he dies and goes off to oblivion. That was so cool with, with all the scavengers. Um, I just love the storyline to this. It was amazing. So it was just a really good movie. It's just but it, again, it wasn't as quite, uh, quite the caliber of the first movie, but definitely a really good movie. Definitely worth the top, you know, top 20. So after Guardians, we get Deadpool 2, which is uh, number 13. Um, love this movie. Love Deadpool. Before he became the cult sensation that he is, I was a huge fan of him 20 years ago. I was collecting his comic. Out of all the comics I collected, I loved his, mainly because of the comic relief that he was. The way you we see him portrayed in the movies is exactly the way he is in the comic, which I love. I love the fact they casted Ryan Reynolds, one of the best castings they've ever done. As far as Marvel goes, I think he's hilarious. I think he's perfect for this role. And this movie is just so funny, so well done. I love his his banters. I love his action. The action they give him, the, the accuracy to Deadpool is really cool, which I love. Um, this is just definitely something part of your collection to make it as a good little comic relief and kind of a breakup with all the other ones. I love the fact that he's interacting with um, the X-Men now in this movie a little bit and they're trying to allude to hopefully a connection and bringing some new characters like like Cable. Love Cable. I think this Cable's a little bit short 
who he's supposed to be when they compare him to the other characters, but he looks pretty good in his in the costume and the makeup they did. Absolutely love Domino. I think Domino's spot on. Um, some of the side characters, I mean, we see a couple of characters that we know had bigger names in the comic book than they show in this movie, and they pretty much die at the beginning. But it was all for comic relief. This only ranks um, lower than the first one, I think, because people like the shock factor of the first one, and it is, in some ways, funnier. Um, the first one, first one, this wasn't as funny as the first one. And they did try to tone it down a bit for more of a family-friendly audience. I still feel like it was a little bit much for a family. Still older kids to adults, but much tamer than the original. And a lot of people who I know who watch these types of movies do tend to like the radar as a, that's part of their, an attribute for why they go to these movies. Whereas this one, I don't know if it was radar, but it wasn't quite the caliber as the first one as far as the adult material and graphics. Which then brings us to number 12, which happens to be the Deadpool movie. I thought about splitting these up like with something else between them because I thought, well, they're right next together. Um, but at the same time, it was kind of hard really to divide these with all the other higher caliber movies. Um, and I love Deadpool. I wish, I mean, for me, I love the character, I love the movies. But as far as the overall picture, just didn't quite make top 10. But the first movie was hilarious. From beginning to, fin to finish, it was action-packed all the way through. I laughed my butt all the way through it. I mean, it was the credits... It was just amazing. In fact, I was going to say with the second movie, the best funniest part of the movie was the credits. That was really the funniest part. I saw more people laughing in the credits than the rest of the movie. Whereas this one, it was nonstop riot the whole time. It was pretty funny. Definitely at all. Very rated R. Um, but that's who Deadpool is. And we, the fans who went to the Fanex premiere of Deadpool wouldn't have expected anything less because it was definitely the type of movie you would see at you know, for a character like Deadpool. So it was amazing. Um, I can't say more about this one. It was just great. Again, and also a little bit more of an obscure character, more associated with um, the X titles and with Weapon X. So had just a few runs of his own. So again, they could be more liberal about his character and his storyline without pissing off too many people. But again, definitely a good movie. And on this list, our final one for number 11, and we'll do the top 10. On the next video, which I'm excited for, so get excited for that. These are the top 10 movies of all time. But in 11th place comes Ant-Man 2. Again, same thing as Ant-Man, but much more dynamic. Like, a lot of these origin movies do tend to run a little bit dry, a little bit flat for people because we're doing a lot of storyline in one movie. In some cases, 10 to 20 years of storylines to get to a point where it's um, the continuity runs alongside the Infinity Saga, which happened back in the 80s, with the full Avenger team. So again, we had to skip a lot of the Ant-Man's origin with the original Ant-Man to get to an Ant-Man who would have been part of this at that time. or So we wouldn't have to have the issues with uh, the character play if we don't like the way the original Ant-Man turned out later on down the road. And this one is just, you got the Wasp, who's amazing. You got these new characters that came in, these new villains. Um, it's just so dynamic. You get to hear like little Easter egg clips about our Avengers and what they're doing. Um, just so many cool Easter eggs in this movie. And again, it was really fun to watch. Uh, we get we we hear about how we we got to hear about how he got to fight with long inside the Avengers in Civil War, as well as we get to see him grow to his, his largest size in this movie, with this gigantic giant man, which is amazing. And then we get to see the the uh, kind of a the multiverse, kind of the, the microscopic world, which is amazing. Uh, this is so cool because it's like brings a whole other realm or aspect to the Marvel Universe and the technology with Ant Man versus the technology with Stark. I mean, it's just a whole other element, whole other. It just was really a well done film. And the actor I got to play Ant Man, I think he's amazing. I think the Wasp looks amazing. The actor I got to play her is awesome. This movie is just an amazing film. One of my top films of all time, almost top 10. Amazing film to watch. I loved it. And I loved it at the end where they have the continuity between them disappearing, for all of you who didn't see that, but it's been a while. Hopefully you've seen it by now. To all the Avengers who disappeared in the previous movie a few months earlier in the Thanos movie, The Infinity Gauntlet. So I was really excited to see that. And it got me so excited for the next Ant-Man movie, which we know is going to have to happen after the next Avengers movie because 
how are they going to come back and what the how they're going to be portrayed in the Avengers movie and how they're going to come back in that which is going to be exciting to see so I'm so excited for that but to see the top 10 movie uh, to see the top or know my top 10 movies you have to come back for the next video so please subscribe and like below and we will get to the top 10 videos movies of all time as far as Marvel goes and you also let me know what you feel about those with your comments if you agree if you disagree and why and if there's any inaccuracies in my videos just let me know because sometimes I throw stuff in there to let you guys kind of pick it out and go did he say that is that real because I want to see you guys catch what I didn't catch those and then we can discuss it in comic book format because I love talking about comic books so any comic nerds out there yeah send me your your uh, opinions <laughs>